seems like this camshaft is spun. All right, here's all the parts that I used over the last few weeks. I'll start over here on the top left. Um, obviously, uh, pressure plate. This is the old uh, flywheel. Flywheel bolts and pressure plate bolts. Clutch, the uh, front flex disc for the drive shaft. Rear main seal, the old clutch pressure accumulator. This is the guide sleeve that goes on the uh, transmission. Um, obviously starter motor, airbox grommet here, idler pulley, pretty noisy, and a complete pain in the ass takeoff. Got the fuel filter and bracket, ended up breaking the bracket, so I got a new one for nine bucks. Um, the old Intake hoses were replaced with the DO88s. Cool expansion tank, uh, probably looks like the original. There's a part number, not sure. Water pump wasn't leaking, but a little bit noisy, so went ahead and changed it. Thermostat, thermostat gasket, temperature sensor. These are those uh, four coolant uh, rings you see at the two are on the bottom of the engine two are on the top bought a new cap as well some variety of hoses here everything you see here is uh, on the underneath the uh, intake manifold here's just some of the uh, pipes I got some more inside should I grab those those are from the front radiator I had a pop with that earlier in the year so I decided to replace those these are the chain tensioners this one was just was just cracked here. I just kind of bro broke off a little bit to see what it would take to get that to disintegrate, but it actually bonded on there pretty good. These are the front chain tensioners. Uh, holders, I should say. These are the actual chain tensioners. Two gaskets for it. The uh, intake cam screws or bolts. These are the exhaust cam bolts. These essentially are uh, torque and then one time use because you have to angle torque them. New uh, cam rings, because I ended up um, taking them off to get the uh, cams spun. This is the fancy uh, diamond washer, or friction washer. I'm not sure if that's one time use, but I went ahead and replaced it and cleaned up the, um, the surfaces so they would bond. Replaced uh, two of the turbo coolant lines. These come directly off the Shark Works elbow. You can see it's still still attached there. Uh, this is one of them that was leaking from this seam here. 
and it was leaking, you know, crust all around that seal. This actually is the right side that plugs into that um, fancy manifold that I pinned with the temperature switch in it. Got a series of O-rings here from all over the engine, a bunch of holders. Some of them broke off trying to force things off or just fatigue from heat cycling. Intake manifold gaskets. Uh, these are the um, fuel injector gaskets. These little ones are for the turbo oil filter housing gasket. That's a gasket for the back of the engine for the oil. Um, and a bunch of random coolant and uh, oil gaskets. Hey guys, hey guys, here's a good reason why you don't fix your own car. Your car ends up looking like this. Transmission's supposed to be in the car. So is your sleeve cylinder, your starter motor. Then you end up with a wall like this, full of diagrams how to put the shit back together. You better have a shitload of tools, a shitload of torque wrenches, a bunch of extra parts, spare clutch, spare flywheel. Good thing I bought a new exhaust system. I only had it on for about three months. There's the engine wiring harness. Turbocharger if anybody wants it. Intake manifold. Another intake manifold. And a bunch of other parts here. Just a quick recap of the valve cover removal. Remove your uh, timing gear cover, secondary oil pump, five bolts down at the bottom, five up on top. You got seven in the middle. This one's special, it's a 70 millimeter. This one's also special because it holds the uh, bracket for the heat shield. Uh, next thing I just removed is the um, turbo line, which is in the way. And that is a T30. So about to pull that line out and then uh, yank this cover off. Okay, about to pull off the camshafts from the engine. These little brackets are numbered to match the stamping on the uh, on the head, I guess. That's whatever it's called. So this is four, three, two, one, and this is seven, six, five. And the thing that's got to come off is the uh, two sprocket screws, one here, one here, and um, the actual pinning part happens inside here. So uh, these bolts also come off, and the uh, tensioners, uh, which is actually up here is the tensioner. That's going to come out, get replaced, and then these uh, blades that uh, guide the chain, top and bottom, will, will come out. All right, I'm going to record the position of the cams that are set now. Uh, this has not been disturbed. Um, this is the way it came from the factory. Uh, I'm at top dead center. I'll show you the crank in a few minutes, uh, this cam lobe and this cam lobe are facing each other. I don't have the cam timing plates yet, but I've marked the position. This one is essentially um, horizontal and this is vertical. Let's see here the, um, the notch with the yellow paint and the uh, alignment for that notch on this pulley are lined up pretty perfect. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and rotate this guy 360 degrees and observe the um, position of these cams here, but these are currently not set. So here goes the uh, 360 on the crankshaft. Okay, 
a little bit past it, but that should be it right there. I've rotated the crank 360 degrees from where top dead center was on bank one of the left bank and now this is the right bank or bank two. It's going to take a note of the cam lobes. All right, I've confirmed with my uh, friend Alex's video for bank two or the right side. At top dead center, this uh, lobe is pointing straight out. This lobe is pointing down. I've got the camshaft lock. Uh, went ahead and marked those. This one is basically looks like at 11 o'clock. And this one is just straight up horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the picture and uh, start taking it apart. All right, so I've got bank two or cylinders two, four, and six uh, set the top dead center, just documenting the location of the uh, cams. So this cam just basically points right out. This one is pointing down. And if you look at the uh, locking locations, when I have the setting tool uh, next week, this one is essentially horizontal. This one is pointing at 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and rotate again 360 degrees and uh, document the other side. All right, all right, I've went ahead and gone around 360 degrees now. So bank one, our cylinders 135 are a top dead center this lobe and this lobe face each other and if you look at the uh, timing tool top camshaft is essentially uh, 9 and 3 o'clock and the bottom one is essentially uh, 12 and 6 o'clock just one, one last video before I pull this thing apart um, bank one it has been rotated 360 degrees. Cam lobes face away from each other. And as confirmed before, these cams face straight out. And we're back at top dead center. Okay, about to remove the chain tensioner on the left bank. Looks like the whole side goes up. There's the cover. I'm going to peel this gasket off and replace it as well. Progress rest on getting the cams off. Essentially got all the uh, cam uh, holders or saddles off. Got the sprockets undone. You have to counter with a 30 millimeter here. Break those bolts off. And then this uh, timing gear cover comes off. And then there's um, some 4 millimeter Allens that have to come off for this uh, camshaft to be removed. So I'm about to finish that up. Um, here are all the parts. Here's the tensioner spring, the cover, and then these are, are labeled. They have to go back in the right spot. This cover, as you can see this hole is where the uh, four millimeter bolt was. And uh, this is a uh, torque to yield or angle torque bolt that's got to get replaced. Just note, notating the position of the cam before I remove it. Uh, the part number is stamped here. I basically just put a sharpie mark there to line up at the top. But I've also got the uh, horizontal slot on this end to line me back up. So I'm about to pull the cam out. I'm going to pull out the uh, bank two camshafts. 
the left side or bank one, the camshaft was spun. So the uh, timing marks are here, horizontal and uh, 11 o'clock. This one's pointing out. This one's pointing out. So hopefully uh, pull this apart and take a look at it. All right, so I was supposed to pin my camshafts today. This is bank two or cylinders um, one, no, two, four, and six, sorry. So these are completely unobstructed. So the theory is you drive um, this pin here and then on this side 180 degrees that essentially pins the cam from spinning. I guess this collar spins freely. I'm going to set this down and cover it up. And now, here's where the issue is. This is on bank one, or um, cylinders one, three, and five. Seems like this camshaft is spun completely. So, I gotta figure out if I'm gonna go to a machine shop to get this repaired, or um, replace it. Let's see if I can summarize how this camshaft goes on the engine. So there's an oil sleeve that bolts on here. Okay, the other side of the oil sleeve fits over that way. The sprocket fits on over the camshaft and tightens down with this one, one bolt here. And it's got a friction washer on the inside. I believe it's in there. I haven't dug it out yet, but um, I don't know if you can see through there. See if I can get some light through it. Yeah, there you go. You can see. It's completely uh, hollow on the inside. So, in regards to the question with the pin, the pin gets driven through one of these oil passages and um, it's supposed to believe lock this part, the center part, to this outer collar, which um, is completely tight. It needs to go to some place that can grab onto this collar with a special tool. And then uh, you can actually hold a camshaft here with the 30 millimeter and then rotate it backwards. So hopefully I didn't butcher that too badly, but that's kind of what it looks like. So I'm just trying to determine the, any damage to the spun camshaft. Um, Color-wise, I don't see any difference in color. This one, obviously, um, oil passages are clear. This one, oil passages are blocked. Uh, there is a little bit of roughness here, but this one has it to a lesser degree. This one kind of matches with this one here. But... Um, doesn't seem to have any other any other damage or differences. So I'm gonna see if I can get it off to a machine shop. So it would seem even though the cams that were spun were still getting oiled, um, they get oiled through this uh, oil housing here. As you can see, the um, this collar basically surrounds the cams, and uh, there's oil passages on the inside. So those passages feed oil into these two, into these two ducts, and it's supposed to at least spit the oil back out through this side or the other side of the shaft. Quite unclear where the oil goes after that, but it's a good thing that they were still getting oiled.
Okay, this is the first attempt of driving in these uh, slotted spring clips into the cams of the 997. I really wish I had a regular hammer, but That one looks pinned. Just need to uh, counterset it now. It's kind of difficult to see on the camera, but you can see the uh, two pins have gone through the outer um, oil race and into this uh, sleeve. Essentially, there's the bottom one. There's the top one, essentially pinning this thing from spinning. I brought this at the timing on bank one. I've got the uh, Porsche timing plates uh, donated by um, Greg House at House Automotive. These lobes point to each other. Installed new tensioner. New chain guides, uh, chain guides here and here been replaced. New friction washer and uh, new bolt. These are one-time use and I'm about to go ahead and tighten these down. Okay, about to torque these um, one-time use bolts. Set my timing. Timing plates are on. These lobes face each other for bank one. This bolt here is essentially 37 foot pounds. Go ahead and set this for 37. Actually, it's already set for 22, which is the bottom bolt. I'll go ahead and do that one first. So you counter. Okay, those are torqued already with uh, my other torque wrench. Just using this newer digital one to confirm. This is now set to 37. I'm going to counter with this 30 millimeter here. Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to torque these to 110 degrees past the initial mark on this one and 90 degrees past on that one. So let me go ahead and mark those out 